Forget about the grimdark. Forget about the death and destruction of 40k and in the Age of Sigmar. Today is about one little mouse and his kitty cat. How do everyone? I'm Scott from Nightfall Minis and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Something a bit different to the usual 40k and Age of Sigmar and all that sort of gubbins and I'm going a little bit more fantasy, high fantasy if you like. And the background of this story is one day I was browsing Reddit and I came across this kitty. This kitty with a mouse on top of it and it reminded me very much of the film Despero. And if anyone hasn't seen the tale of Despero, it's basically a little mouse who thinks he's a knight and he's not a knight, but then he wants to prove that he is a knight. So he kind of goes out and does knightly things. And I don't normally paint this sort of stuff. I saw it and just thought, that looks pretty cool. It's a bit different to my usual. And I just dropped a message on the on the Reddit just saying it looked sweet. It gave me some Despero vibes. And luckily, the creator of it from Naga, which is um, a Patreon, messaged and just said, would we like to do a collab? And it's my first collab I've done, to be fair, on the channel. Uh, and I was obviously up for it. I thought, yeah, that's cool, sweet. Now, for anyone who hasn't seen Nagaminis on Patreon, you should go and head over. There's going to be a link in the description below for it. But basically, Nagaminis produced at least four STL models every single month, including decorated bases. And it's very much like high fantasy, whimsical sort of fantasy with like deer folk and mouse and kitty cats and stuff, all the nice stuff. It's something that, like I say, I don't normally get into, but it's something as soon as I saw it, I immediately thought this is something a bit new, something that I've not really done before, and I wanted to try my hand at it. The current membership level for a Nagalord is only £3.50 a month, and that gets you access to all the files and stuff as well. And they even give you an option to sell the files as well if you wanted to later on down the line. Now, this isn't a paid promotion. It's not a sponsorship whatsoever. It's just two artists collaborating together. But I do really appreciate the guys over at Naga, both Adley and Sarah. I hope I said that correctly. Sorry, mate. Uh, yeah, I appreciate those guys very, very much for reaching out and just saying, look, here's some files. See what you can do with them. So yeah, cheers for that. Thank you very much. And also, it wouldn't be right without a shameless plug to my own Patreon. I've just launched my own Patreon. You can come and support the channel for just $2 a month, which helps me in coffees while I'm painting these sort of stuff. And you can even get access to my Discord. You can have a chat with me. I can try and help you with painting. And yeah, we can just have a chat and share some memes. But anyway, let's get on with the actual painting, shall we? So the files were sent to me as pre-supported files and normal files as well. And the pre-supported ones were hollow for the kitty. It saves a bit of resin, make sure it's a bit more stable and stuff while you're printing it. And the the mount itself came as a sub-assembly. So you got the mouse separate to the cat. Uh, it's easier to print and less layer lines, less connections, all that sort of jazz. Uh, and I noticed straight away as I was looking at it, the detail on these minis is fantastic. You've got little shields, little satchels, little leather straps and all sorts all along the back of the kitty. So I loaded it up into Chitty Box and got that sliced. And I was also sent some bases as well. So I got sent three bases. I got sent a log base, a log base that was like a cross section of a log and then also just like a generic woodland base with a little rock and stuff on it and i said i'd give these a print so you can see what these look like and i decided that uh, i was going to also try and make my own little diorama for it. it's part of another project that i'm doing for another episode which you'll see in the future on how to make woodland base and stuff but yeah really good quality of these to be fair and it wouldn't be a 3d print in montage without at least a little bit of hyperlapsing so this is a hyperlapse of the kitty it took around about eight hours for me to print at a 0.04 layer now i'll be honest i had some problems with this print but it was down to my fep film i had to change it, it had a little split in it but then after that was done there was absolutely no problem whatsoever i printed these bad boys out set them to one side to cure gave them a clean snapped off the supports and we were ready to go so the first thing i always do with all my minis is give it a base coat a primer coat now this could be gray if you're going for lighter colors or in this case black so just some vallejo matte black primer i find it really easy for an airbrush to spray it over and you can do it with a rattle can if you don't have access to an airbrush but the basis behind this is that when you're painting you want it all to be one continuous smooth surface and the primer does that not only that it's going to help in the future as well so when you're picking up your model and you're showing it off to all your mates or even using it in games you don't want your paint to start flaking off or start peeling off in your hands and you, then you have to start touching it up and making a mess over all your lovely paint job that you just spent eight hours doing. So the primer will help this. It will make it stick to the mini a lot better and it will also protect it as well from usage in the future. 
and once the primer's on i like to give it a zenful highlight so this is just literally a case of running some white ink through an airbrush catching all the raised areas at about a 45 degree angle you can do this with a rattle can i just find that the ink is a little bit smoother less speckly doesn't leave any texture on the mini so then later on when i paint it it's just going to show me where my highlight should be where my shadow should naturally fall and it also helps as well if I want to run some ink through it later or some really thin down paint. It's going to give me a natural smooth gradient without me putting too much effort in. And it also shows off all the details and stuff as well. There might be little bits that you've missed during the printing process or during the build process. And this kind of highlights all those little bits of detail. So after having a discussion with wife, we decided that this cat was going to be a marmalade cat. That's what she requested. So that's what I said I'd do. And to start with this, I did a dark reddish, so like a... a red mix with a orange ink just over the top portions of the cat i wanted it to have a white belly a little bit of a white muzzle and some white paws and to achieve this i just went underneath with a white ink prior to painting the top of it with the dark reddish color and it gave a nice little transition as well between the two colors and then using the same zenful highlight technique i went over with just the orange ink over the top of the dark red this was again going to highlight all the little bits of detail in between the cat's fur and give it a nice little natural gradient so i could then dry brush later on and highlight that even further i left the cat to dry to one side before doing any dry brushing so i didn't pull off any of the previous layers that i'd done and decided to start working on the mouse it was just a case of in my head this was going to be a dark gray fur colored mouse so started off with a dark gray over all the face and the ears on the mini before moving up to a lighter gray and then finally finishing with a highlight of a really light gray almost white and using like a stippling scratching technique for this to kind of create a little bit of fur and a little bit of texture on the top of the ears and where the highlights fell using the xenophil highlight previously it was really easy to see where it would be and just to start layering those in and with those little bits of scratches and texture and detail there on the fur i was really happy with the overall result of the mouse's head and the overall effect of fur and then to finish off the face, I just used some flesh colour on the nose and on the inside of the ears. And with all the flesh and fur and stuff painted on the mouse, it was then time to move on to the metallics. And for the armour, I wanted to go with a dark metal. So I did what I normally do, based everything in a black undercoat. And I find that this makes your silvers, especially your like grey style metallics, stick a lot better onto them. So based it over with a black undercoat and then moved over onto lead belcher from games workshop and as you can see with the black undercoat you get a really nice layer when you're painting down lead belcher onto the black undercoat there's no streaking there's no marks on it it's a really solid one color layer one coat and it lines up perfectly for our next step to get the dark metal which is to mix a 50 50 lamia medium with um black templar contrast Instead of using Null Noil, I find Null Noil can make things a little bit more glossy than what I'd like. And this mix is perfect. It actually stains the entirety of the metallic paint and makes it more like a stained dark metal colour rather than just shading recesses. The only caveat here is you've got to push the pigment round a little bit more to get it. But then the positive side of that, I suppose, is that you can control where and when you get your shadows. And on black metal like this, I just wanted to make sure that all the shadows were in the recesses while also still staining and making that metal just a little bit darker. And then after leaving that for a considerable time to dry, it was time to start highlighting the metal back up again. So first using lead belcher again to pick out the majority of the areas and then going around the edges and the very very fine edge highlights with Stormhost Silver. This is just going to be like the light reflecting off the top of the blade, off the top of the helmet, the shoulder pads, etc. Just anywhere where the light would have naturally bounced off. After painting the gloves leather coloured and making the hilt of the sword gold, Mousy Boy was done and he was ready for his faithful steed. So it was time to turn my attention over to Kitty Mount. I've got to say, to be fair, I was really proud of how the mouse turned out and I couldn't wait to get the rest of this piece done. Unfortunately, this is the part of the fairy tale where things go a bit sour. I managed to snap one of the legs off the cat while I was giving it a vigorous dry brush. It turns out the resin inside hadn't cured. Now, I did have a few failures with this, as I said, with the FEP film previously. I don't know if this was something to do with my machine. I'm not going to blame Nagaminis at all in any way, shape or form. This is definitely my own fault. And I could have really easily edited this out of the video, but I think it's important to kind of show you guys this happens. These setbacks happen. And you've just got to learn to roll with it. So after a bit of milliput and a little bit of super glue and remodeling it all back together, Kitty was ready and good to go. So starting with a bit of a lighter red compared to how we 
originally based this with the red and the orange ink i gave it a dry brush across all of the fur and this is quite a heavy dry brush i wanted to make sure that the brownish red that was underneath it was minimal and it was going to be more red from this dry brush than anything else and this could then lead us on to our next highlight and wouldn't you know the foot broke off again and actually later on the two back feet went on as well so i decided it was probably best to take it off the pin that i'd done and just to paint it holding it in my hands the worry with holding it in your hands especially when you've airbrushed anything or dry brushed anything is that's going to rub off and you're going to start peeling paint off it but it needed to be done i couldn't have this model keep breaking in my hands i wasn't being very productive while ever i was fixing it but with the model repaired finally and it in my hand as it probably should have been in the first place again my fault entirely i should know better than this i decided to give it its highest highlight which was going to be orange it was just troll slayer orange from uh games workshop and buffing this around with the white as well to try and make a nice little seamless joint between the white patches and the orange patches like you would see on a normal cat just to try and give that nice little blend and make it feather in a little bit and at this point i decided to almost save my progress and gave it a base coat of matte varnish all over through an airbrush and then left it overnight just to dry this is going to mean i can pick it up without removing any of that paint which i was so worried about losing in the first place so the next day i decided to tackle the eyes first just a case of a nice teal with the classic cat's eye slit in the middle and then a final gloss varnish just to make them shine and then to draw a bit more attention to the cat's face i decided to just take the orange on a brush itself rather than dry brush and then just do the same as i did with the mouse's face and ears and just give it a bit more texture a few bits of scratches here and there just to add some fur and then went around and painted all the various bags saddles straps shields bedroll armor mouse tail the full lot went around and did all the little bits of detail and stuff that's going to really finish off this model paying particular attention to make sure that the armor was painted in exactly the same way so then when i fixed the mount back on top of it it would all tie in together the last thing to do was to base the beast and as i said previously they came with bases already and i gave these a little bit of a paint up these would look even better if you were to put some flock on there or some texture on there as well but i want to make a custom one the idea behind this base is that the cat has jumped through the forest and is jumping across a river. If you want to see the breakdown of how I made this base, I've got a new video coming up shortly, which I'm going to link in the description and also in the title cards up at the top right hand side. But yeah, I kind of outdid myself with this base. I'm really proud of how it turned out and it shows off the model perfectly. And after two days, various failed attempts by myself, the mouse and his kitty was finally done. I'm really proud of how this turned out. It's not my style of painting whatsoever. I don't normally paint high fantasy stuff, let alone cats and mice and stuff. It's very grim dark that I paint. It's very much battle worn, damaged, rusted, pitted, scratched, just knackered in general. That's the normal stuff that I paint. And this was a lot more high fantasy and cute and whimsical. And it was completely fresh for me to do it. And I really enjoyed everything about this project. My favourite part is that it tells a story. This is a little mouse knight who is on his little quest with his kitty mouse, bounding across the forest, jumping through rivers, nothing is standing in his way to get to his damsel in distress or whatever it is that he's got at the end of his quest. And I loved every moment of doing this, despite the frustrations of it breaking and my own incompetence. Now, I would have liked to have this video out a bit sooner, but it is my 10 year wedding anniversary the day that i'm releasing this funny enough so yeah happy anniversary wife by the way but i really enjoyed everything about this project and i'm definitely wanting to do more stuff like this in the future and if you want to see more content like this in the future don't forget you can support the channel by just liking commenting and subscribing let me know what you think of this mini you can also join me on patreon like i say just two dollars a month you buy me a coffee keep me awake while i'm doing this and while i'm in the basement trying to work away and paint amazing things for you guys and also definitely check out naga minis over on patreon they're creating some amazing stuff if this is the sort of stuff that they're creating already imagine what they're going to be like in the future as well now is the time to jump and back their patreon get these amazing stls get these amazing minis show them off to your mates and play something a little bit different instead maybe take a bit of a break from the grim dark this particular model would be perfect especially as a little gift i can't wait to give this away and i am contemplating giving this away on the channel so keep an eye out for that in the future but for now guys that is going to be it make sure you keep your sense safe it's a bit rough out there right now and we will most definitely see you in the next one